Looking at Jerry World. That's Jerry Jones heading back into the Cowboys facility just yesterday. He said, quote, it's a big day for the NFL. Can't wait for the whole football world to get back in business. We are with you. Jerry Jones, a smile on his face, suited, booted, and ready to go. Welcome to Good Morning Football, everybody. Happy Wednesday. That means it's a whiteboard Wednesday situation. It means I'm here. My name's Kay Adams. It means Nate's here. Nate Burleson, Kyle Brandt, Peter Schrager, all here to discuss the latest topics. Always a good show, Schrager, when we kick it off with Jerry. Yeah, Jerry Jones being responsible there, of course. And we're going to be responsible, putting on a great show for you guys today. We've got a bunch of guests. Cannot wait for this one. Two huge ones. How about one of our favorite players in the NFL as far as both personality and production goes? Mark Ingram joining the show. But that's not it. Eric Armstead, star defensive player for the San Francisco 49ers, is going to be with us as well. Two big guests there. How about some Steelers talk? You know, Big Ben had the video that came out yesterday. But what about James Conner? What can he do in this year, which is a pivotal one? And will he be here for the long term for the Pittsburgh Steelers? We'll get into some Pittsburgh talk and talk about AFC North today. But what is this? What is Sean McVay doing? Like, all right, bud, we get yeah. it. All right, 96, <laughs> 97, 90. Okay, very cool. How about Josh Altman, the real estate guy from uh, the, the, the Million Dollar Listing, putting it on his YouTube? A lot of stuff not to like, but maybe some people do like this stuff. We will get into the Sean McVay push-up challenge and what we'd like to see from coaches around the league going to YouTube. Yeah, some fun on a Wednesday. Let's get into it. I mean, we've done the guy romper challenge. Why not the push-up challenge here on the show? I feel like you guys have all taken your turn taking, doing push-ups on GMFB, Shrakes. We've all tried. Sure. Some of us have been successful. Some of us have not. Me. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag GMFB. Let's hit the leave block, guys, and talk some Tom Brady. Leave block. Leave block. Leave block. Let's do it. So he was spotted working out. Take a look at this. Look at that helmet. Ah, this is Tampa Bay High School. Just after sunrise yesterday morning. And he wasn't alone. Who are those guys? Well, that's Scotty Miller with him. He has Cameron Brait and O.J. Howard. No Gronk, as far as I saw. Quarterbacks Blaine Gabbard and Ryan Griffin and Dare Ogunbowale, the running back, all hanging out with Tom Brady. More on Brady in a moment, of course. But first let's, first, let's hear from some of Brady's former teammates, including Rex Burkhead, who we have right here, giving his impressions on Stid the Kid, New England's starter. Very impressed. Um, you know, last year, even though he didn't step out on the field that much, um, just seeing his improvement every day on the practice field in meetings. I mean, he's just he's a very, very humble guy, and he came in eager to work right away and picked it up so quickly. I think that was uh, what struck me is how quickly he picked up the offense uh, from the get-go. And, uh, you know, he's out there making calls, making adjustments and audibles um, like he's been in the system for a while. And so um, I'm excited for him, excited for his opportunity. And, uh, you know, whoever's at, at quarterback, that's him, Hoy, or, um, whoever, um, you know, just ready to, to follow them. Mm, that's Burkhead there. If you think about Stidham and where he is, one of you said on the show yesterday that he's got a lot of pressure. There's a lot to live up to. He's going to be in the shadow. I think it was Nate. That, or he has a top five defense behind him. He's got a Hall of Fame coach. He got to learn a system behind a Hall of Fame quarterback, maybe the greatest ever. So, Who's under more pressure to succeed, Kyle? Jared Stidham in New England or Tom Brady in Tampa Bay? Look, the Stidham thing is obviously big for him and the Patriots and Rex Burkhead. But I can't get past the stakes of what Tom Brady is attempting right here. I, I think the pressure is more on Tom Brady because it's just so large. Look, if Jared Stidham falls on his face, he gets benched for Brian Hoyer and the Patriots trade him for a fifth-round pick in the offseason. He becomes a Jeopardy clue. If Brady does... It's part of history, and I don't mean NFL history. I mean American history. The, 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 the Belichick, Brady, Pats guys are like the Kennedys of sports. It's Camelot. And this will not be Babe Ruth on the Boston Braves. This will not be Ali getting knocked around by Trevor Burbick at 39. That's one picture in a newspaper somewhere. The world will be watching Tom Brady. Five primetime games. Five. They will be watching. They will be tweeting. They will be sharpening their carving knives. And he knows... Why do you think he's sneaking into parks and practicing in secret in high school fields? Because come week one, the Tom Brady Buccaneers are going into the Superdome. And if they lose 
27 to 13, look out. That Belichick carried Brady for 20 years column is already written. It is in Dan Shaughnessy's draft folder. All he has to do is publish it, and there'll be 50 other ones. Jared Stidham, sure, the balance of the power in the AFC East. Tom Brady is the country. His, our kids are going to learn about what happens with Tom Brady this year. It's on Brady. First, let me say, how great was it to see Tom Brady in a uniform again? Oh, man, we miss football. The Brady books. Da -dun -dun -dun. All right, so da -dun -dun -dun. listen, da -dun -dun -dun. when it comes to pressure, I, I feel like Stidham versus Tom, they're both dealing with different types of pressure, right? So, I mean, for me, I think Tom Brady is looking at this differently because he's been there. He's done that. Tom Brady doesn't feel pressure. He applies it, baby. I know Tom Brady is approaching each and every season after winning his first Super Bowl. No pressure. No diamonds. You know what it is with him. He wants to go out there, have a good season, make it to the playoffs, and then get another Super Bowl ring. But when it comes to Stidham, this is different. I know Peter's going to touch on it, but do you guys remember what we saw when he went in the game last year? I mean, I'll let Peter remind you of that. But here's the thing, man. Pressure isn't supposed to isn't supposed to design who you are, isn't supposed to make who you are. Pressure is supposed to help you get to where you want to go. And I feel like if Stidham wants to be established as another one of those great Patriot quarterbacks, he's going to have to have a great year. The pressure is on Stidham. The pressure is on that offense. The pressure is on the coaching staff for the Patriots. Tom Brady has dealt with this. He has felt this every single year he has a target on his back. You think it's going to be any different? With a better group of wide receivers this year than he had last? No, 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 no. This pressure is on the young quarterback that we know as Stid the Kid or Stid Vicious. Peter, what say you? I love it, Nate. And I think what you're referring to is Jared Stidham in a regular season game going in and throwing an interception right away against the Jets and then having to have Tom Brady go back into the game, which was as unfortunate a debut in a regular season game as any quarterback could have. And yet... I think he's in a pretty good spot right here. I would look at Brady as well. Now, look, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it. There's this whole thing of like filling in for the, for the legend's shoes and how difficult it is and how much pressure mm -hmm. there is. And the list goes on of guys who, who have to do that. I, sometimes it works out and it's just fine. Guys, do you remember who filled in for Dan Marino after he retired in 1999 after 17 seasons with the Miami Dolphins? It was Jay Fiedler. Jay Fiedler yep. came in and he had played for four <laughs> other teams. He had bounced around the league. He had no real expectations. Fiedler came in and guess what? The Dolphins started the season off five and one. They went 11 and five. They won a playoff game and things were just okay. And guess what? No one expected Jay Fiedler to be Dan Marino. So they were pleasantly surprised. I think if Jared Stidham goes out there and plays like Jay Fiedler played and gets a 10 win, 11 win season, like that's great. That's fine, mm -hmm. and that's not so impossible. Brady, if Brady wins less than nine games, it is a colossal disappointment. The pressure is yep. all on Brady because why? The Buccaneers, they moved on from a 26-year-old quarterback to go for a 43-year-old quarterback, and us in the media unanimously have said that is the wise decision, and it will elevate them, and they're going to be playing for a championship <laughs> this year. I think Brady has all the heat. Stidham, go have a Jay Fiedler season. Go 11-5, and five and everyone will love you in New England. And if he doesn't go 11-5, and five, if he doesn't win 10 games, who knows if he'll get another chance to start in New England. I'm more intrigued by that because he's got this golden opportunity to carve his way into the league. If they're up in New England. If he doesn't secure that job for himself or his future, I don't know where he will be playing. I don't know if he will be playing uh, anywhere else. I feel like Brady, like Nate saying puts pressure on himself. He sort of eats pressure for breakfast when he gets up in the morning with his avocados. Uh, Stidham really needs this man. The pressure's on him for himself and his own personal future, while Brady's legacy, I think, is pretty much cemented. Uh, yesterday, we had Ian Rappaport on. He also wearing a suit similar to Jared Jones. Hmm. Well, they were here to talk about the league meeting, of course, which went on, and Ian Rappaport has more on lots of the things that they discussed, some proposals, and they're talking about how they could potentially reopen those facilities. Take a look. It was an important day for the NFL on Tuesday as five or so facilities officially open for business for the first time since the coronavirus pandemic hit, including the Dallas Cowboys. Jerry Jones made a public statement for the first time from his Frisco facility calling it a big day. That was a good sign, even though Alan Sills, the NFL chief medical officer, said there is no timetable. He's not going to put any dates on the calendar for when facilities would either be fully open or whether or not teams would have minicamp before 
everyone goes away for the summer. You do not want to lock the NFL down to a date because there is so much that we do not know with the coronavirus pandemic. And so much of what's going on now for the NFL is to make sure that teams are 